technology. I love it. Exactly. Uh, so Let me you, you say you grew up on the original series, but not when it originally ran. Yeah. You know, the, the, the original series started in 66. So I imagine I probably watched reruns because I really have a very distinct memory of Star Trek. And uh, my dad was a United Airlines captain. So my dad and Captain Kirk were like, I always wanted my dad to be Captain Kirk, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah. So you discovered the original series in reruns. Mm -hmm. Probably, a re yeah. Yeah, really early on in reruns. So, and then, um, let's see, Next Generation came out not till 87, I think. That's, that's correct. But you were in Hollywood at that point. So what were you doing in Hollywood at that point? Yeah, so I moved to Hollywood in uh, November of 87. And, um, you know, I, I decided to drop out of the University of Washington and move to Hollywood to be an actor to pursue my, you know, pursue my dream of being a waiter. <laughs> anyway, anyway, because they're, you know, all actors are waiters. And um Moved to Los Angeles and finally got myself an agent. And she called me up one day and she said, "I got you. A, you know, I got you. A, I got you an, a, an audition out in the valley, and it's for Star Trek: The Next Generation." And I flipped out. So that was my uh, that was my original foyer into um, into Star Trek. Well, besides waiting tables. I understand you also did <laughs> some transportation stuff. Is that true? No. Or is that later? No. Are you talking about like on a, on the um, IMDb stuff? Yeah, it's, that's all no. bogus stuff. Yeah, yes, it's all uh, yeah, that's what I thought. I yeah, yeah you can't trust yeah. them to feed your fish. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know who that guy is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, talk to me about how did you 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 got the call from your agent? And you're yeah. like, this is Star Trek. Talk me through what happened next. Well, you know, do you want the do you want the unedited version? <laughs> so, what, what you feel comfortable telling me? Oh, it's uh, you know, it's really funny because it's all in a it's all in uh, chapter six, I think, of my book. So, um, uh, I was dating Wesley Ewer at the time, and um, now wait and a minute, I, Wesley Ewer, the guy who was on Days of Our Lives and Land of the Lost. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. And, okay. um, and so we were, uh, you know, we we were seeing one another, and I was at his house when I got the phone call from uh, Merrill Jonas, and um, I was flipping out, and we were, you know, really excited, and so we started, you know, celebrating a little bit, and uh, that I got this audition, and. Um, and ended up to make a long story short, we celebrated so much that I woke up late and um, was about 15 minutes late for my audition. <laughs> and it's not really the way you want to start out a job. Um, but I got to the audition and uh, let's see, um, walked in and I, you know, it's, it's really funny because you have a memory of something happened and then you add a whole bunch of, of, of things into it. So I'll try not to embellish too much. But I walked in, I'm wearing a cardigan sweater and a tank top because that's what we were supposed to wear. And, um, and the casting director was sitting there, I can't remember her name right now. And um, she said, are you here for the audition? And I said, yeah. She said, well, you're, you're late. I said, oh, I'm sorry. And I, like I was really crestfallen and started to turn and walk out the door. She goes, but wait a minute. And she walked into the room and um, comes back out. She said, come on in here. And uh, I walked in and like the, you know, uh, David, or not David Lynch, Lynch. Um, Livingston? Remember. No, Lynch was his last name. He was the director. Oh, Lynch. Yeah, he okay. was the direct, director of uh, uh, my episode. And, okay. um, and a few other people were, were there. And uh, Michael Westmore was in there. I remember that. And, uh, and um, it was a really odd uh, audition. Like, I walked in and they had me like, spin around and take off my <laughs> take off my card again and I'm like okay I've I've seen this I've seen this porno you know and um uh, so they asked me you know if I would be willing to shave my body for the 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 part and I said I'd be willing to shave their bodies for this part so 
um, it was, you know, I was willing to do anything when at that age in, uh, in Hollywood. So there it was, that was it. I got the job 15 minutes late for my audition. I love that. So the episode you were in was called Unnatural Selection. It was in the second season. Right. You played David. Yeah. But, okay, so now and this is where I get confused. You have a named character. Yes. You're in it, and you don't have a credit. No credit. Nothing. Hey, please explain this to me. Yeah, so, you know, I'm not really sure how much work my agent was doing for me at the time, but initially, um, I did have a line. Uh, and I still like there's boxes you can't see them they're they're off the set right now but they're up in this closet right here I, and I found a box with all of the original scripts from uh, this episode and the very first script that I was sent David um, the doctor Pulaski says is your name David and I say yes and uh that little that little three letter word was was gonna you know make my Hollywood career, um, but my character was telepathic, so it made absolutely no sense for me to tell her that my name was uh, David, and it saved them a lot of money in SAG fees for me to just go. <laughs> so. I absolutely love that. Um, it's amazing how much of a speech you can give if you're telepathic. <laughs> Exactly. Like if I got paid for the words that I actually didn't say, I would have been a rich man at that at that episode. Well, walk me through what happened after uh, you got the role. You're on the set. What was that like? Were you just well with Pulaski's a, character? Or? Actually, you know the the, the role start the, the 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 work of the role started long before the filming. Um, because I, you know, I, I'm sure that there's people here that remember that episode, but I was covered in, uh, number three, Mexaline Styrolite. I don't know what the, the line is, but I, I was covered in plastic coating that was form fitted to my body. So in order to have a plastic coating that was form fitted to my body, I had to go get fitted for a plaster cast to be made of my body. So um, I went to the the uh, property part department and um, had the, this whole day of plaster casting and uh, yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> there's a funny story. Um, Michael Westmore told me about when he originally saw the plaster cast, and I'm not bragging here. This is exactly what he said, so I'm you know whatever. But he uh, saw the plaster cast and realized that. Um, a 12 year old boy would not be so well endowed. So he had to file down the, uh, the plaster cast uh, before he actually made the plastic to, to fit on it. So uh, I thought that was an interesting, interesting little side note. Yeah, um, yeah so that started uh, quite a bit for, quite a bit before filming. And when all of that was set to go, then we went and we uh, started filming the episode and filming, you know, um, it was it was crazy. It was like a really quick. Uh, they had it all down to a science for filming. You really knew exactly when you walked in, and and um, my character laid around a lot, um, except for the the short bits that I came up off the table. But uh, you know, you know, you you get there and you're just immersed immediately in Trek, and uh, it was a dream come true. It was really a fascinating experience to like all of a sudden to be there. You got to be vacuum sealed in an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Right. <laughs> Absolutely love that. Um, so ha watching the show, did you like the, your performance? Yeah, you know, I. Um, it's really funny luckily I didn't do or say very much. So there's very little that I could really critique. Um, and, and cause I have a habit of like really critiquing if I, if I have the opportunity, I'll, I'll pick something to death. So I'm, I'm glad I didn't have that opportunity. Um, and I did like my performance. I thought it was, it was sweet. Um, and, and there's, there's pieces of it that, you know, I, I really hold near and dear to my heart. The funny thing is, I'm 54 years old. I, I think I was 22 at the time. And uh, 
and here we are doing an interview. You know, the longevity of this little this little featured extra role has you know it's it's been with me my whole life. It's fabulous. It's it's part of the DNA that makes up who I am. What happened in Hollywood after you did this episode? Um, not, not a whole heck of a lot. I don't think I did anything else. Um, I, uh, when the episode was finished filming, uh, Richard Arnold and I, uh, sparked up a, a friendship through this. He was the, he, um, God, I can't remember exactly what his title was, but he, he would make sure that everything had a good continuity to it, um, through the, through the episodes, um, and through this, he got me to be, uh, I went to my first um, Star Trek convention in Philadelphia the weekend uh, before my episode came out. And um, uh, Nichelle Nichols and myself uh, uh, went out to, and him and, and Richard went out to Philadelphia and got to um, be the guest you know, guests of this uh, Star Trek convention. It was just, that was a really fabulous uh, little little side note to, to all of this. And that's where I got my first taste of Trek, the larger community and to see how, how fervent and, and beautiful the, um, the Star Trek community, at, you know, beyond the, beyond the, 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 the screen, how wonderful that community is and, and how um, committed the community is to the, the Star Trek enterprise, not the ship enterprise, but the enterprise of Star Trek. So it's just, um, it's, it's an amazing uh, study of, of, of people. That is so cool. Um, Eventually, you you moved away from Hollywood again, and you yeah. became a, a you you joined the medical profession essentially. Yeah, I you know it's so funny. My life has just kind of bounced around. I um soon after I uh, filmed Star Trek, I ended up uh, getting into recovery, and um, you know I being in Los Angeles and it's just kind of fast paced world, um, I ended up kind of spiraling out of control. Like a, you know, like a lot of people, like a lot of artists do. And um, eventually I moved back to Seattle, Washington, finished up my degree in political science. And um, that really didn't get me very far. Um, had a little bit more spin out of control and um, got my life cleaned up and went into nursing. And now, uh, you know, years and years later, I'm a, I have a doctorate in nursing and um you know, I, I, uh, I inject Botox for a living. So it, what's really funny about all this is I still use this Star Trek character. It's actually in my bio. I do a lot of trainings for one of the aesthetic companies. And um, they talk about how my character made people uh, grow old uh, very quick, very rapidly. And um, what I do in my life today is actually anti-aging and I do Botox and fillers and I make people, you know, look and feel their best. Uh, and it's just this amazing dichotomy of my life from, you know, that, that bad boy character on, on Star Trek to my, my good guy role in real life. And you make them feel comfortable without saying a word to them. <laughs> <laughs> just at the end of a needle. <laughs> Are you a fan of the other series? You know, I have actually been a fan of all of the series. And, you know, I maybe I'm maybe that puts me into a, you know, a different shunned category because I because I, I don't know. There's some people that are, you know, very committed to the next generation or they're I, I actually wasn't a fan of Next Generation um, until I was on it. Uh, the first season of Next Generation, I was like, oh, this is not the original series. And um, however, I became a, you know, a, an avid uh, fan of TNG. And then Voyager, like uh, Captain Janeway is my all time favorite captain. Uh, I don't know, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I loved Voyager. I loved the entire storyline. Um, 
And, you know, I didn't really get into D Deep Space Nine when it first came out, but recently I just, you know, binged watched the entire, uh, the entire season, all the seasons of, of Deep Space Nine and really have grown to love that. I was not going to do, um, uh, there, was, there was one in there that I didn't watch very much. What was the one with? Uh, what Scott Bakula? Scott Bakula. Uh, Enterprise. That, that one, I guess that would be my least favorite of all of them. Um, I was not going to do Discovery. Not going to do it. And I, wa I watched a couple episodes. I was like, oh, it's so dark. And I, it's just, it takes you back to an older time. I was just, but I ended up like, I'll give it one more, give it one more. And now, you know, I, I can't wait for the new series to come out. Um, and recently, I, you know, I'm okay. I'll, I'll, I'm getting older like Picard is. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting down and enjoying a little Picard too. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, the whole, there's a, there is a quality, I get emotional about this because, and it's stupid to get emotional about it, but there's a quality of, of Star Trek that speaks to, um, a better life, uh, for all of us. That's, um, Gene Roddenberry was such a brilliant man, you know? Hmm. I don't know why I get emotional about that. But I think of the world that Gene Roddenberry lived in, in here, and I just am so blown away that, um, that he would put that on screen for us to like really be able to see and touch and be a part of as a, you know, a hope for a better world or a better universe, but let's just start with uh, the one we got. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting to get emotional about that, Jeff. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. No, th thank you for that. No, seriously, I, I completely agree with you. Um, he, he, did, he brought something to us that we all have embraced. Yeah. I mean, even something as simple as the flip phone. <laughs> I mean, I remember when the flip phone came out, I was like, flip phone? Jeez, the flip phone's been out since 66. <laughs> so, you know? Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the Orville? Oh, I love the Orville. <laughs> you know, I can't get enough of that. That is like, that's the, that's the campy side of Star Trek that was just the, the, the writing in that was, the writing of the campy side of Star Trek was so brilliant. And Seth MacFarlane's writing with, I mean, it's just, it's, it's clear, it's concise, it's sweet, but it's got, it's, you know, it's got enough um, grime to it that people are actually gonna watch it and uh, enough like under underpinning of dirty joke to it that, um, I just think it's, I, I think it's lovely. And, you know, some of the, like the, 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 uh, the, um, the homosexual uh, undertones of, of uh, God, I can't remember his, his blanket on the guy's name. Yeah, but, are you talking about Bordas? Yes. Oh my God. It's so lovely. It's like, it's just, uh, there. it's just a great show. I, you know, I like the ship. I like the writing. Um, I think it really, uh, they it's it's more Trek than, uh, sorry, J.J., but it's more Trek than the J.J. J.J. Abrams Trek. Um, I really think Orville is, is, uh, has done a great job with that. But it's only my personal uh, opinion. I, Don't shoot the messenger. Oh, oh, oh yeah, no, no. I, I was going to say regarding J.J.'s films, I think they did a great job casting. Yeah. Uh, some of the characters and actors were just so perfect yeah and made me feel i was watching the original series Absolutely. again but that spark was missing at the same time yeah it just the they were too uh cinematic they were too uh, trying too hard um and lost some of the the quality of trek that i think uh i don't know i don't know it's just you know it's like it, they were it, it's it was there was too much into the blowing up the ship and not as much into the blowing up the relationships that, uh, that I really look for in Trek. Gotcha. Um, besides what you've said, 
why do you think Star Trek is in Star Trek is what? Um, so why do you think Star Trek has endured for so long? You've mentioned some things already, but I'm wondering if there is something else. You know, I, uh, I think it's just, it's like when it hit, when it hit in the time frame. I mean, it hit when you and I were growing up, when you and I were kids. And just that, that hope. The hope and the dream and the and the dream of space, um, you know, I I just think it hit at the right time, and and it hit and it stuck, and and then the you know the original series has pulled everything else along with it, you know. I don't know. I think it's just a it was a timing thing. I I think if the next you know if the original series came out today, I, I don't I'm not sure that it would have the same, uh, the same pull as it did when, you know, when we were kids. So. I, I think you're, I think you're probably right. Um, what is, so you've been watching all the shows. What is your favorite series and what is your favorite episode of that series? Oh, darn. Really? Uh, favorite episode. That's a tough one. Okay, I, well, definitely it's Voyager. So, but I'm trying to, a favorite episode of Voyager. It's gotta be the caretaker. And it's gotta be the caretaker. Um, it's just, it's, it's one of those episodes that when I think of episodic Voyager, that's the one that comes into my mind. Uh, I don't even know why. And the, the characters in Voyager, they were so, uh so well fit together uh all of them like you know the the thing of the like neelix uh, like i just i think about all these characters and what they represent to me in my life um it's just it's interesting how this disparate band of uh characters on this lost ship like there's just so many pieces of my own life that I can see in Voyager, uh, just how far off course I had gotten and picked up, you know, all of these uh, characters along the way that have really banded together to get me home. It, you know, it's just, I see it as sort of a, um, an, a retrospective of my own life. That's a wonderful answer. Um, my last question to you is, can you give me a live long and prosper? Oh, God, yes. Live long and prosper. I love that. Thank you. I, I will stop recording here. Give me one second.